Fitness influencers. They can either help you or hurt you. Here are five signs that your favorite fitness influencer is full of crap. <laughs> this is going to be a fun one. How, just thinking back, because we've been doing this for a long time, so I, I've been now, uh, gosh. <laughs> is, it, is it possible not to offend people? I know, this? I know. Oh, no. So, I've been in the space professionally for over two and a half decades, right? And, and all of us have been into the space, at least on our own, for longer than that. And it has changed radically when I look at it now versus uh, when we first became trainers. Like, like when we were first trainers, Fitness information, you, it wasn't easily accessible. It was magazines. There used to be barriers to entry. Yes, yes, yes. That was a thing. Yeah, there, it was. All I, got, I got all my information from magazines and certifications, and then experience. There wasn't this ability to just to just hear all kinds of different people presenting and opinions and stuff like that. It was it was much more much more challenging. Sign number one: Your trainer wears track suits, and <laughs> soccer shoes. <laughs> hey, he's never played soccer. Look at that match. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, dude. Uh, <laughs> I just had to add can't on. Think I, of, can't think of a Sorry, I just had to. I just had to add to your list. <laughs> dude, a throw some shade <laughs> on us first. <laughs> yeah, I'm sign. next. It's right, okay. right, 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 right. Yeah, the yeah, second sign. He wears a flannel. Yeah, he wears a flannel. Every flannel. Day. It's yeah. not even cold. <laughs> uh, yeah. Right. yeah. Today's giveaway on YouTube is Maps Aesthetic. To enter to win, leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. We'll let you know in the comment section if you win. Also, this month's workout program sale is MAPS Anabolic, 50% off, and MAPS Anabolic Advanced, also 50% off. If you're interested, click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Do you guys, do you, um, do you guys think it's better or worse these days for a consumer... Who's I looking for good for who's looking for fitness and health information? So I, I wrestle with this. I go back mm. and forth on my opinion on this. I think that uh, there's way more options, which generally that means better for the consumer, right? Yeah. Like in any, any other market, like the best idea will rise. To the right, top, right. Yeah. So and I and I think that still somewhat reigns true that over time, even with all these options, the cream will rise to the top. Mm -hmm. And that tip, and then it'll be competitive because there's so many. So for the end consumer, that normally means better coaches, better trainers, better prices. Mm -hmm. But because it's so competitive and with social media, it has expanded the reach of crappy trainers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know if uh, the immediate right now is so much better. I think it's worse right now. So I've been thinking about this, um, and I think that there's a certain type of consumer that has benefited from uh, new media. And it's the consumer that likes to go out, likes to educate themselves, compare information, and um, kind of study and figure things out. I think that consumer is much better off because there's so much information that you can learn from and you can parse things out if you kind of pay attention and read and listen. Then you're able to parse out like what works and what doesn't work. Now, the consumer that doesn't do that, the young consumer or the consumer that just wants to act right now, mm -hmm. um, I think is worse off. Like, especially young consumers. So do you think Teenagers, that, I think, okay, are worse Okay, so off. that's funny you say the that majority. because I would argue that younger consumers are more privy to how the social media game works than older consumers. The mm. game, yes, but the information, like, like, so, if, like if you look at fitness Don't you feel like, I'd like to hear both of you guys' opinions because you both yeah. have, like, teenage kids. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would, aren't they more, like... You know they shop around. They shop around and they they check reviews yeah, and they go to Reddit sure. and they go like cross reference things. Like maybe for you bring up a good point, but at the same time, I feel like we're in a little bit of a bias with that because I'm constantly kind of educating my kids about like those signs, those yeah. red flags, like you know, asking them and prodding like who are they following, what what kind of information are you guys consuming, and then they're kind of teaching their peers, but their peers are like. They're on TikTok listening to these wacky ideas. Because, huh, you know, I just recently uh, was well, talk, talking to a friend of a friend. I recommended a program. He's about 10 years younger than us, 15 years younger than you guys, 10 years younger than me. And just want to point that out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'm five years old. It makes you feel better, dude. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. No, yeah, I think yeah, yeah, two yeah. or three. <laughs> I'm 29. How old are you? Yeah, or? right, bro. <laughs> anyway, so what happened with him? So uh, I, I recommended Map Symmetry to him. And, uh, you, like it wasn't long before I got a text back. He said, "Oh man, yeah, great reviews." And I'm like, "Oh, who'd you talk to?" And like, and he went to Reddit. 
oh, to yeah. go oh, find, yeah. find that There's out. There's a lot of reviews on there. Yeah, and I just, that's a, and so uh, I thought that was really interesting. And I'm like, I, that's not something I would default to, but it's very smart to do that, right? Mm -hmm. Where it's like this kind of, it's not, he didn't go to our page. You yeah. know what I'm saying? He didn't go to my Instagram or he didn't go to our yeah our marketing material that probably that's will, probably one of the most unbiased place they could probably get like, it is a real like feedback from just regular people it's just, yeah. it's just that the challenge though is I mean, with like kids a lot of trolls but kid, i know me when i was a kid right like you're <laughs> you're more likely to listen to the super ripped exciting you know body centric whatever person yeah i'm more if somebody tells me like this is the secret they don't want you to know and here's what's you know this is the cutting edge whatever yeah I would be more like, oh, that person knows what they're talking about. I'm going to go with that. Or they're entertaining or whatever. So that's why I think that they they may be more harmed um, than helped. And, and, and the data shows with the young kids, especially the body image issues going up mm. because of the fitness influencers, the people that present themselves. Yeah, I, I feel like there's, there's two conversations we're having yeah. within this conversation that, that both are interesting to me, right? Yeah. And we're obviously just speculating on on if it's true or not like i don't know who would be more duped would a would a, Maybe a it's boomer like the economy right like, yeah. like certain people got like a lot better off and certain you know and it's almost like it created a bigger divide between the two well what's interesting is this because when we were consuming this information as young trainers or even just as teenagers working out um there were arbitrators of information and gatekeepers now that doesn't necessarily mean that what you're getting is accurate because oftentimes the gatekeepers were product companies that were selling things sure. that were yeah. so the gatekeepers prevented good information or skewed information so that it overvalued well the products I, classic example of that mm -hmm. i mean at one time bodybuilding.com was the most one of the most searched websites in the world yeah um and their model was give out free information and sell the everybody supplements yeah. and so of course over time their content would is going to steer in the favor of getting you to buy supplements. And so, and that's exactly what kind of happened. I remember reading magazines and the article, they would always put- Same with that. Yeah, right? there was one magazine, I, I don't remember the name of it, but I think it was Muscular Development. Um, and they would post, Flex did this too, where they would post studies. But all the studies that they would post- would Supported point, the yeah, supplement. It would yeah. kind of point to a supplement or something like that. So, okay, so because yeah. of that, and we've evolved now to this internet, yeah. social media time, it's disrupted all of that. Yeah. And there's better information that can be found, but then there's more of it. Yep. So there's there's a couple of different ways you can argue this. I think that more customers are hurt today from the bad information, bad trainers that are out there, but in the, in the same breath, more are helped. Mm. So you just so, think there's more consumers overall? Yes, yeah. and that would make sense. That yeah. it's it's just it's it's pulling. I will say this: what's interesting over the last ten years that we've had this podcast, I have seen the information getting presented on social media seem to move more towards what's true and what's not true. Like uh, like the yeah. average person now will argue basic things that in the past they did, had no idea over, like calories mm -hmm. or macronutrients um, or strength training even. Uh, so it's it seems it seems like more is better yeah. and low barrier is better. But in, in, in the middle of that, you as a consumer have to sift through and like, okay, well. I feel like it, in real time, we've been able to see a lot of these like, trends and, and ideas uh, evolve in real time. And so yes. it's like, so you're like, f we're finally to the point where a lot of them died or rebranded or, you know, found um, something else to glom onto. And so I think that we didn't even add that on the list of flags, but if you ever see somebody who's Going constantly had this thing that they're all about <clears throat> keto or they're all about IFYM or they're, and they've been jumping on these different ideas and that have, you know, it's just a matter of time before it gets exposed. That's a red that flag. That's actually, a, that's a really good that's point. That's a red flag. That is a red flag. That's a good point, Justin. That's a good Like ad. all, like the, their entire persona is based off of fasting or yes. keto. I mean, even carnivore diet carnivore. is going to come up in that. Or they, right. are they on their List. fifth supplement company that they've worked yes. with now, right? Protein powder or whatever like that. Yeah. I mean, this is something so that- So this is six signs. That's a good one. We yeah. didn't have that one. Yeah. No, I, I, I do like that. In fact, that's, this is a conversation that, you know, Katrina and I have this a lot because she manages all of our partners and there's times where she's just like, oh, this other partner, they're great. They're this and that. I'm like- I don't care. Like we, we stood by this brand as a good brand. We wouldn't have partnered with them if we didn't think so, just because someone else is offering yeah. more money or better deals, or maybe they're a faster growing company. 
that's great, but it's like I don't I don't, I don't ever want to represent our brand as somebody who like oh it jumps from one it's just next. jumping from one thing to the next just based off of where they can make more money and so I think that's a great, I re- a great I re- telltale that says a lot about integrity it does yeah. And yeah, you remember yeah. you guys remember when we were the po- when we started the podcast there were a lot of podcasts with the name keto in the in the title. Uh-huh. Because at the time, keto was like this super like popular thing. Mm-hmm. So there were like entire podcasts dedicated to it or Instagram pages or whatever dedicated to it. Um, I think uh, I think that that tends to be a red flag because all these extreme endeavors or you know ways of eating or whatever, they don't apply. There's so much nuance they don't apply to everybody. So and, and they and they tend to communicate in extremes. You talk, you listen to a carnivore quote unquote expert. And it's all about how evil fruits and Broccoli vegetables is, are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah well, yeah, that's, yeah. that's your, your, I mean, you have that listed as your third red flag, zero nuance. And I agree with that. That's, that would consider, that would be considered that. Like, the, I think it's always a red flag if somebody has labeled themselves uh, it, it, one specific diet. Yeah. Because what we know about, about diet is that it's, it's so diverse mm-hmm. uh, and not only to the individual, but where that individual is currently in their journey yep. even. Yep. So it's like you could be you could you could argue all day long that this diet is what's best for you. Well, that's best for you at this time in your life. Right. Yeah. And I bet that even changes. Bull testicles over time. are gonna get old after a while. <laughs> <laughs> that's, you know? Yeah. Like, <laughs> calm down. Gross. But that, yeah. that but that's a that's a thing to watch out for, right? Is this person promoting said diet and that's all their their hand they're hand they're all carnivore, they're all keto, they're all vegan. It's just like and if you are trying to help all people, that's a major red yeah. flag. Or if you communicate it as the answer to everybody, or if they answer a question and they don't they don't say right depends. out the gates, it depends. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like somebody, a, a good coach or a good trainer, when asked nutrition questions or exercise questions. Of course, there's there's definitely questions where I could say yes or no, but oftentimes the answer is, well, it depends. It depends on your goals. It depends on your fitness history. It depends on your current stress levels. It depends on uh, whether or not you enjoy this or not. It depends on, you know, are you just getting started? Are you being consistent? Did you fall off? Have you worked out before? All of those things will help me give you the best answer and I've only learned that through experience. I can't tell you how many times. Well, I've, many isn't times. That, isn't that always? Isn't that? Isn't that always true? Except for people in mathematics. <laughs> yeah. I know. I'm serious. Like, yeah. what? What other subject? That, let's say you're an expert in anything else in in the world. Would you not? Should you not after, say depends to somebody when asked a question other than math? I think science and technology can be like that. No, I mean, we're in science. Yeah. Even science depends. It, de- it depends on a lot of variables. There's yeah. a lot of variables that come into play when you're talking about- Oh, I see. Because you need more information. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like math is simple. Yeah, what's it's one like, plus one? Right. right. I so don't when I ask you an equation, you about it. it's, it's going to be the same <laughs> yes. all the time, no matter what. There's yes. no, there is no, but every other field I feel like is always going to be nuanced. And that's a, that's yeah. a, that's, I know we're talking about, I would say influencers to really keep uh, changing well, definitions when you, when, and when terms. You, when you're working with people, it has to be. I can't. I mean, can't, I was going to say I can't tell you how many times. I, mean, I know you guys experienced this too, where you think you know as a trainer, then you run into that client. That's not it, and then you got to go back and be like, I guess that's not everything. And here's what it is. I remember when I had a client who went vegan and got healthier, whereas most of my experience was veganism didn't do so well for some people. I remember when that slapped me right in the face. I remember when you know working with a client, I had them do. One exercise I thought was the best thing, it just didn't work for their body. So I'd switch to another exercise. And it, 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 I don't remember exactly, I think it was a deadlift, in fact, uh, which is one of my favorite exercises. But my point is, is there's a, there's always nuance. And if you're trying to communicate to people uh, and you don't hear that nuance, or you're trying to, you're, you're following an influencer and you don't hear any nuance, it's all very this or that, and that's it, um, then there's probably a red flag. I, I think, yeah. too, it, what makes it more difficult than what we do, there's there's times where you actually throw out the nutritional science and biological science out the window because the behavioral science comes in. It's another factor. Yeah, and so that's what makes this really difficult for the consumer is that somebody can be you know, touting the right you know, nutritional yeah. science, yeah. right? Or the the right exercise. Yeah, exercise or, science or biological science or physiological science. Like they could be touting the right information in regards to that, but if they're not factoring in the behavioral psychology that's connected to that person, it's not it's still not complete. Yeah, right. Application isn't there. Because there's times where I'm going to actually uh, I, mean, I mean I might take into account the uh the nutritional science, right? Or the physiological science. 
But there's many times where the behavioral psychology is going to trump that. If somebody asks you, what's the best form of cardio for me to, uh, to, to let's say, I want to get in better cardiovascular shape. What's the best piece of cardio I can use? My question to them, the <laughs> first one favorite? is going to be, which one do you like the most? Yep. Yeah. That's the first question. That's the first, then the second question is, why are you doing why? it? Yeah, why yeah, are you yeah, doing why, it? What are your goals? Yeah. What's your fitness history? But what the is first, this endurance leading you towards? But the yeah. first question, because as, as an experienced trainer, I know uh, consistency over long periods of time, is that's the biggest challenge. So let's first start with what you like the most. That's probably the one that we're going to pick yeah. because it's the one that you're going to do. Yeah, yeah. Um, the other one is, this one I think is kind of obvious, but a lot of younger consumers might fall for this, which is that their content, the fitness influencer's content is mostly about the fitness influencer's body. Mm -hmm. It's about how ripped they are or how jacked they look or how great their butt is or whatever. And then they promote that they coach people or that they help people. But the, 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 the way that they're portraying themselves or their information, it's no value. It's basically, like, look at me, this is the evidence. This is why you need to hire me. Not a great way to to find somebody who's going to give you good information. This is tough because we know uh, sex sells. That's right. Mm -hmm. it, gets it gets attention. Yeah. And 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 it does serve them, right? So this is a really and I and I don't even know if this is necessarily an example of a red flag or what makes a bad trainer, as much as it is a flag that they're not quite to the level of experience that you would yeah. want, right? Because this is part of the journey I think some some trainers are, right. are on right and they could actually be a pretty good trainer but they think that this is the best way to market themselves because so many other people before them have have shown this path and they've shown that they've been successful by marketing sex by mm -hmm. marketing themselves or marketing their bodies or transformation well, there's no follow-up like if the rest of their content is void of a lot of like educational content where they're actually trying to teach people something or um you know bring up other points uh you know of nutrition to reflect on and it's just literally about like how their body's changing on a day-to-day -day basis and it's always about like how they look you know then you have to ask yourself like what kind of value is that now what do you guys think is the most the most dangerous part about that the first thing that comes to mind for me is that the, the trainer that promotes that or uses that as a tactic is also the type of trainer who trains their people the way they train themselves. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. like that. They, they, it worked for them. There, and now so, I'm an expert. And yeah, yeah, and so then they lean into the like whatever it was, whether it was the self talk of discipline and motivation that got them to be mm -hmm. where they're at, or it was following the specific diet yep. or the specific type of program. It's like, and so then they're they're promoting that same philosophy mm -hmm. to every client instead of understanding how unique every individual well, is. Well, that's where it's dangerous because they can get a lot of business through that. Um, and, and, and they're not going to be as motivated to expand on their education either I, uh, because like, you know, it's almost like this, um, it, it's self-perpetuated. It's like, I'm getting the reinforcement by people buying into what I'm doing. I'm think I'm providing a service. And so it's like, they don't really think it's wrong necessarily, but uh, they don't have the experience to tell them otherwise. I want to speak to trainers and coaches now who think that this is the way to grow their business. There's also a, like a, it's a bit, it's a myth that this is how a lot of people in the fitness space actually make a lot of money. Very few people no. can use their body and their looks to gain followers. And then through that provide enough value to get money from the followers. In fact, it's a terrible business. Right? We don't do, we teach trainers not to do that. And right? It's even if it is successful, it's a dying model. Totally. You can only hold, you live up to you that for so long. To that. And, you know, you kind of pulling the curtains back for the, the listener because we have so many friends in this space. These are the, the trainers that are miserable. Mm -hmm. These are the trainers that have now locked themselves into this is how I look. And so either one, they're obsessed year round of maintaining this look or they stoop to lying about it, mm -hmm. right? Photo shoot one time a year when they're in the best shape of their life, drip content. So they pretend that they look a certain way, hiding though in the shadows because they don't want people to really see that like, oh, I don't really look like that mm -hmm. year round. And so either way, it's a torturous way to live. It's also, yeah. in my opinion, uh, if this is all they do, it's 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 a strong sign. I don't think it's 100%, but it's a strong sign that this person values fitness in the wrong way and they're going to teach it the wrong way. And the value that they're that what they're showing is that that's their value point. is all about how they look. It's that's all about point. looks. It's all that's about the results. That's such a good point. Yeah, and so if you're if you're a trainer and or you're trying to be a trainer, right? You want to get clients and that's what you think the value of fitness is, that's all you think the value is, you're not going to be a successful coach or trainer because 
That is not how you get everyday people. That's yeah. yeah, that's not how you that, get everyday people to become that's consistent. That's such a better point to be made, yeah. Sal, because this is something that we always are, are trying to communicate to our coaches and trainers that we help is like one of the strategies to making sure that a client has long-term success is detaching them from the scale in the mirror. Yes. Mm -hmm. Once you learn to detach them from the scale, and that's okay that that is what motivated them to get them started. That's normally where most people are motivated to get started mm -hmm. is the scale or the mirror. But if you're going to have them have lifelong success, you as a coach and trainer at one point need to learn to be able to move them away from that and attach to all the other benefits that a healthy body provides for them. And that is how you're going to be really successful as a coach. Now, if you're promoting your, bo your body all the time and the way you Probably look all the time you even know yourself. just shows you where you're currently at still right. in your journey and you haven't even evolved to that. So that's probably the best point yes. made in regards to somebody who uses that content along is that you're basically showing your audience that I'm still trapped in that place that I attach being healthy with the way I you're look. You're going to hire a coach that at best will get you some results and then have you get back out of shape or whatever because you never learned how to develop this relationship, uh, the right relationship with fitness uh, and nutrition. The The next one is, and this was just plain and simple, is they lack experience. Mm -hmm. If their experience coaching people is, I built a business online, a social media following online, and then built a coaching business, they don't have experience. Yeah. I I firmly believe that someone needs to have experience working with people, co training people, coaching people, preferably in person, before this is becomes uh, their business. By the way, this also, and I'm not going to be super strict on this because I was a young trainer at one point as well, but this somewhat applies to young uh, individuals. Like if they're, you know, 22 years old, social media, and they're like, I'm a great trainer and coach or whatever. There's only so many years of experience that they could have working with people. And, and this is just frank. And again, I started as a young trainer. I didn't know anything for <laughs> say 10 years yeah. as a trainer in terms of how I was able to really truly become a, a effective. And now that's not true for everybody, but that does show, uh, you know, some lack of experience. Oh, I think this is really important. I mean, and, and one might be able to argue like, oh, well, it's the science. They can read the studies. They can share it because there's examples of these YouTube stars or Instagram stars that have all this this uh, attention and have a, a huge business online, but really have coached minimal or no people in person. And those conversations are so important. It's so important to what happens when I pair these two exercises with a majority of my clients, like what happens to their movement? What happens when, when does it break down? Like, and what is it, what, what's the feedback they give me when that starts to happen? Mm -hmm. What are some of the common things that they say? What are the most common struggles that people have when I ask them about their nutrition and their diet? Like, there's a lot of things that- How do I get this person to want to continue when they're going to fail? Because everybody fails, but, you know, for uh, along the way. How do I get this, per how do I yeah. guide this person along this journey? You can't go to your studies and your science for that. That'll mm -hmm. help in terms of maybe what, where to start or what works and what doesn't work, yeah. but it's not the full story. And it's only experience that you learn that. I've, like I said, I've worked with many clients to know that, you know, <laughs> what they like, yeah. what they're going to be consistent with and their personalities and their psychology is probably more important than whether or not a study showed that this is 15% more effective than the study. Yeah. How do you garner that retention? That's everything. Mm -hmm. That's, that's what we, we should gauge our success off of. As coaches, is like, are they wanting to come back? Are they looking forward to the journey, the experience, and they're not like super fixated on the outcome as much as they're just enjoying the process? Well, yes. so much communication is actually visual and not audio. Mm. So you could talk somebody all day long on a Skype or Zoom or what that, but like to not watch their body language when you do different things. I mean, and that's what you're doing as a trainer. You learn how to read that. Yeah, you're testing all these variables. You know, whether that be your, your programming or what you tell them to do nutritionally or the way you communicate advice. And part of their response is the way you visually see their, their facial expression, the, the way they receive that information, the way their body moves when you show the how, exercise. How like, long did it take you guys to be able to do this? It took me like 10 years where I where a client, if a client's words didn't match what I was reading, I could tell like, okay, they don't, they don't necessarily know how they feel. Like they'd walk in and I'd be like, how are you feeling? Oh, I feel good. But then I'd notice signs of stress, fatigue. Okay. Now I know you say you're fine, but I think I'm going to take you through this workout over here. Or you watch mm -hmm. them move 
or perform certain reps and the way the fatigue kicks in and you go, okay, so we need to scale back. Even if the person says everything feels great and I'm awesome, you can kind of, you can kind of tell. Yeah. It took no, me I mean, 10 years to be able to start to figure that stuff out. Yeah. No, you know? I, I just think that that's such an important piece to it. So if, if all of it, if all of your experiences is through, and by the way, that doesn't mean that you can't become a good trainer through that. It's just a, it's a much harder path. And I would, I would imagine that if you lack all the in-person experience, then the amount of, you know, uh, of time not, to figure that yeah, out. Yeah. It longer. would be, at, you don't as have longer. the database to refer to you. Yeah, it'd be longer because you, you're, you're trying to figure that out without ever having that. Part of what made me a good online coach was I had experienced, I had over a decade of training people in person. So I already knew, like I could forecast yeah. common behaviors. Yeah. Like I would tell clients, this would be me on a zoom call, right? I, I'm gonna. I want you to do this and this. Now I know you're gonna want to do more because you're gonna feel like it's too yeah, easy yeah. for you. Easy for well, you to add that. a few more reps. Yeah, and you're gonna feel like, like you should do more, and you're gonna get more results. But I'm telling you, that's not what you want to do for these reasons. Like, how the fuck do you do that if you've never trained yeah, somebody yeah. in person and seen that firsthand? Like, you've never seen somebody do a workout session with you, and then you go over to your desk to inter, inter put, in, input your information, and you see them out there doing more exercises. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you just, you don't get to see yeah, that yeah. if you're at home, or you only meet with this person once a week or once a I'm month. going to eat a little bit less, you know, than he said, because I'm pretty sure I want to speed this up. Or yes. I want to, yeah, add a, a cardio session, you know, even they told me not. So or, it's going to feel like you're eating too much food, but actually... Or, or, or you have to, hey, how's, how's your squat form? Oh, it's great. And then you look at it, you're like, holy fuck, that's uh, not great. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, like, you don't, if you, you don't know that until you see seen people move or how about somebody tells you like ah, i've got this you know pain in my hip like what do you tell somebody if you've never trained somebody and you don't know what happens when they do specific exercises and what common dysfunctions or movement patterns do people have and then how to how to yes. counter I mean, and, that and to be more speci be more specific do they lack experience working with people like you this might even help with your with your journey because you might look at them and go oh they've been training bodybuilders for five years but you're not a bodybuilder. You have mm -hmm. no intentions of wanting to be a bodybuilder. Well, then they pro they might not know what it's like training a middle-aged woman who just wants to get in better shape or a dude that only works out twice a week, a lot of stress, got two kids at home or whatever, right? So you want to find somebody who's got a lot of experience working with people like you um, and preferably in person. Um, next up, their content is mostly entertainment. Now, there's nothing wrong with entertainment. We do that on our show quite a bit. Mm -hmm. It's actually a very good strategy to keep people engaged as a trainer and a coach, part of your job is entertainment. Person's going to show up twice a week to see you. Can't all be serious workouts. Yep. They got to also want to enjoy seeing you. But if the content is all entertainment, um, then th th they're, they're probably not the best in terms of knowing how to train you or coach you or move you in the right direction. And what would fall in this category? Gimmicks? Yes. This, uh ass photos and like yeah like, just a bunch of entertainment stuff yeah you know the, the gimmicks are the big one right like yeah. look at this <laughs> look at me squat while standing on a yeah yeah like, like benching a bench you know yeah, with yeah. like chains hung you know i mean will we I include know, like the the inter the the hype motivation videos with this too like so like <laughs> yeah. i like i envision like uh, a, a lot of the female online coaches use the sexy you know, camera from behind, watch yeah. me do all my exercises. Not a lot of guys do that. Guys tend to do the more like, watch me pull up with my cool car yes. yeah, and yeah, then, yeah. you know, throw the chains around my neck and then go do like some intense workout where my yeah. gun hits me in the stomach. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right? I mean, yeah. that, is this what we're talking about? Like, yeah. it's, glasses that's what goes gym. through my head yeah. when I think of like- It's a character. You're looking at a character. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the traits here are like, okay, this is big red flag for me. Like if, you know, if my- my my female coach here, like all her all her workouts are angles from her ass. I have right? an entourage yeah. behind me. Yeah, yeah. and know, my, like my dude happens. rolls up. My yeah. dude drives up in his his Audi R8 <laughs> and with no shirt on. You know yeah. what I'm saying to the gym and yeah. does all his crazy workouts and the, the hype videos around what he's driving and stuff more than it is about what he's his knowledge. Well, absolutely, so, this yeah. Guy, so I think that guy, would go in there. Yeah, and yeah. then lastly, it's just that they they promote intensity, all about intensity, all about beast mode, never quit get sore, hammer yourself, destroy yourself. Don't just, just this David Goggins mentality of training. He's a, he's its own character. He does his own thing. I think he'd be a terrible fitness coach as well. My point with this is that that promotion of ultra intense workouts is a huge red flag for me. When I look at that, I right away, I go, this person hasn't worked with a lot of people. 
Um, and they're hitting a button that worked maybe any, for them, but it's not going to work for long. For any them. theories to why this has been perpetuated in our space for so long? Like, why has that oh. been a go-to model that so many trainers default to? Do you guys have any? I have an idea on. on what do you what, think? What, no, I want to hear. Do you guys have any ideas on why why you think people do that? I think it's because they 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 the inevitable is going to happen. Like this is just like uh, training clients they account like, for the fall off. Yeah, tr training clients is like baseball. Like yeah. if you are getting, you know, thirty percent to forty percent results, you're Hall of Fame. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Like you're just you're bad. So sixty seventy percent are are going to fail. So one of the things that you can always lean on that it's because you didn't try hard enough, you didn't uh -huh. work hard enough. Oh, like, yeah. like most people are going to not be successful. And then the way that makes and people are gonna be like, yeah, you're right. I yes, quit. exactly. They're and feeding it, their <laughs> their defeated mentality. Yes, and if I promote myself as the Joe Donnelly type of person who works out, you're just like, fuck, I cannot do 52 sets every day like this. This is crazy. He's just so badass. Like if I wanted to look like that, I just got to get to that level. And yeah, so you can't get on my level. I, and I feel like that's the the reason why that that strategy has stayed around for so long is because it's the easy. Hype you up so it gets that emotional response to people that they're like, oh, I want to do this too. Then when the inevitable happens, since more than half of them will fall off, even the good ones, right, will fall off. When they do, that'll be what they'll blame is not that I had a bad coach. Yeah. It's just like, oh, I couldn't yeah. work as hard as yeah. Could. Well, I think it feeds two myths. One is that in order to be fit and healthy, you have to suffer so bad and it's so hard that so so then when they see it, they go, that's the evidence. Oh yeah, it's because. I have to suffer terribly to suffer more to feel, to look fit and healthy, but that's why I've never been so. And then the second thing is it captures people in a state of motivation. When people, when the average consumer is ready to start a fitness program, it's probably because very recently they felt really bad about themselves. So mm -hmm. now they're hyper motivated. I want to do this and I want to do this right now. And then they scroll through and there's the guy telling me I'm a piece of crap that I'm not working hard enough, that if I worked out six days a week or seven days a week and I just ate all these, these, these specific foods that I would get there. And you know what? He's right. I'm going to do that. And so it feeds into those two. I almost blame Hollywood. Myths. Yeah, that too. <laughs> because of all like the, the hero origin stories. And mm -hmm. like, you, like you said, you got to go through this like incredible suffering uh, to be able to be emerge, reemerge and transform, become this amazing Phoenix or whatever. <laughs> I mean, right. It's like, stop being so dramatic, you know, be more pragmatic. I mean, the bodybuilding space is just as guilty of this too. I totally. mean, I mean, uh, let's be honest. How many, uh, Ronnie Coleman videos did you watch before you worked yeah, of out? Of course. You know, oh, it works, man. Yeah. I get sucked into it. And those. it's not, and they, we don't follow around. The camera doesn't follow him around on rest days or when he's walking on the treadmill. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, this is like you, you watch his, PR days is train his branch Warren type of workouts is what we're drawn to. But the reality is like, it's such a terrible way for 99% of the population to train. Life. It's the belief that you, and I've, I've even said this myself wrongly, like you have to force your body to change, force it, right? Think of the word force. It's like, it doesn't want to, I must force it by all means necessary, brute force. It's going to happen. The truth is, if you when you do this right, it's you encourage. It's much you, more like a dance. One hundred percent, you encourage your body to improve its health. Your body doesn't not want, your body does not want to be unhealthy. Movement. Yeah, it's not like your body's fighting it. Like, oh damn you, I don't want to get fit and healthy. That's not what your body's saying. Your body's saying, hey, the signals you're sending me are overwhelming. Can't recover from this. I yeah. can't adapt. You're not feeding me enough. Uh, I think I'm just going to survive. I'm just going to survive right now, which means I'm going to try and store body fat. I'm going to ramp up your cravings. I'm going to make it so that you don't have a lot of muscle because that costs a lot of calories and we're really stressed out. And we, we, you know, usually stress means there's not enough food. People don't understand this. They think the reason why I'm not fit or look the way I want or feel the way I want is because my body's resisting. I just have to, yeah. I have to force You're the not shit. Fighting hard enough. No. no, the truth, the truth is when you do this right, it feels like you encourage your body. It took me so long to figure this out for myself. I figured it out for oh, my yeah. clients way before I figured it out for myself. When I finally figured it out for myself, I remember when I finally figured it out, I remember going, yeah. oh, I'm not supposed to be super sore after every workout and I'm improving. That was the problem. That's why I became one of the biggest evangelists because it's like that completely was my mentality. I have yeah. to crush, I have to bury myself. I have to punish myself to emerge this super human version of myself. <laughs> yeah. Like that was my only go-to. Yeah. It's just pain. 
Yeah. Bad pain. I think that's a common like ath uh, athlete you know perspective. I think for sure. Even pro athletes don't train that way. They have an in season and off season for a reason. Yeah. If yeah. they train like that all the time. But there's a part of training for a, a professional sport that is in season. Hell yeah. Well, I mean, even the, and there's just mental toughness, right? Yeah. Oh, like, I see what you're saying. And so there, there's, there's, an, there's, you're trying to obtain it. Most people that are training. Uh, like an athlete aren't technically trying to be an athlete. They're trying to train like an athlete because they think they want to look like an athlete. But what they're really doing is they're they're what they're training like is the the mental grit and and part of the training for an athlete, not the the balance, nutrition, and 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 uh, exercise yeah. portion. The other thing that I would add in this, even though it's not necessarily like a ultra intense workout, is the the creative workout, right? So if your trainer is doing all these weird exercises all the time mm. with you balancing on the stability ball making up things you've never seen before like and I, i'm very much so guilty of this in my early years as a trainer like trying to wow my client with, that's an easy way to know they don't know how to train, yeah, yeah with the unique stuff the, the truth is the the best stuff is the most basic shit that everybody listening to has seen before yes like the best movements the best the entertainment yeah, yeah. Brought up, right? Yeah. yeah. So that's I. So I don't know where you want to put this category because uh, it's not necessarily super intense as much as it is just creative. It's like mm -hmm. if if you are not seeing squat, deadlift, bench, overhead press in your programming, ma major red flag. And if it's it's full of all these neat exercises <laughs> and your and your trainer is trying to convince yeah. you that they're this for this reason because it's cutting edge or it's new or it's so much better because it do works all these other things at one time. Like that's when you know that that's a red flag yeah. because you know they don't they're not a lot. And of to be clear, all I mean, us in this room uh, at one point did all did most of this or a lot of this at least, right? We made these mistakes as as trainers and coaches ourselves early on. Uh, but what got us out of it was we we we, con we were concerned with our clients' progress. How do I get them to progress? How do I get them to continue to get better? And and why is this not working? Why do I keep failing? And eventually, you figure this stuff out and you figure out that these are all terrible red flags. Look, if you love the show, you got to check out some of our free guides. In fact, we have a free guide for hard gainers. If you're trying to build muscle and you find it difficult, download our hard gainer guide at mindpumpfree.com. You can also find us on social media. Justin is on Instagram at mindpumpjustin. I'm on Instagram at mindpumpdestefano, and Adam is on Instagram at mindpumpadam. Adam.